Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at Verified Investing. We have a lot to cover, guys. We got economic news this week, like jobs, job report. Uh, we have Bitcoin piercing 65,000. We have natural gas surging up dramatically. There is a ton of things to look at on the charts, and we're going to get right into it now. All right, so let me just do this real fast. We'll throw this ball over. There we go. All right, guys, got some teamwork today. Um, just jumping over to here, and you can see, there we go. Awesome. Uh, we're working on that, by the way. But let's get right into the action today. So one of the things we want to go over here is the keys to the day. And the number one thing is Bitcoin, guys. This is now becoming the number one kind of search trend in investing. We know that the spot ETFs were approved already. And obviously, more and more people are starting to chase into Bitcoin. Now, it has crossed 65,000. Technical analysis dictates that the first level, this is the first key level that it has to hold. All right. So again, remember this is that 65 was the April high from 2021. Therefore, you want to see price hold this level. If it can for a day or two, you likely go up to 69, which is then that late 2021 all-time high on Bitcoin. So it's like, think about it like stepping stones, right? You have to get above that last major pivot. And then once you do and establish yourself, once you build a floor there, because you've gotten above it for a few days, you're able to put those boards down, create a floor, you then can push up to the next one. And that's what I'm watching for on the levels. Now, yes, I am still short at around 56,400. I will keep you guys in the loop if I negate or if I exit that trade. But right now I'm looking for a confirmation move above 69,000. That would probably be the negation of the bear case uh, in the short term. Okay. Equity futures are flat to slightly lower today. The biggest thing here is Apple. Apple is collapsing again today. Last I checked, it was down about $3. They're getting sued uh, for over a billion dollars. I believe it was Spotify related. And again, we know that this stock had broken a key trend line just last week. There's another major trend line it's going to test today. But if you keep breaking these levels on Apple, guys, it's going to continue to trigger sell-offs and more downside action. Okay, um, one of the catalysts here we see today keeping the markets afloat in, in spite of what is going on with Apple is obviously the semis, guys. Semis don't get any hotter than this. Uh, mainly, we're talking NVIDIA, SMCI, AMD last week was a tremendous mover and will continue today. U.S. national debt just last week jumped another $100 billion. And again, we're now trading near $34.5 trillion in U.S. debt. The thing to understand about this, guys, is that we're, we don't have zero interest rates anymore. So again, at one point when the U.S. was taking on all this debt, it was like, OK, well, if you can get it for under a percent in terms of what you're paying for borrowing that money, it's fine. But now you're talking about interest rates much, much higher, which is why it's going to be so much harder to get out of debt because interest rates are now four or five percent on this debt. And again, that's going to build that interest payment over time is just going to crush the U.S. US economy. Again, one of the worst things, whether it's your household or anything, is debt. It just ladens you down and makes it so hard to get that head above water. And the US is now facing this, as honestly most of the world is as well. All right, let's talk a little bit of action on SMCI here, and we'll get into some charts in just a minute. But basically, late on Friday, SMCI and Decker were announced. It was announced that they are going to be added to the SP 500, being a momentum stock, super micro again, surging. I think Right now, it's up like 16% pre-market. It's approaching those previous highs. So remember, 1077 was that previous high a few weeks ago. I want to see if it can get above that. If it can get above it and hold and have a daily close, now you have something in the works to maybe push it higher. If it fails here, then downside likely back below 1,000, even back towards 700 would be likely. Gold is flat, neutral on the day. But again, break, broke out, as I've talked about, guys, and I believe this is the start of the bigger breakout that I've been telling you guys. Friday, we have non-farm payrolls reports. Wednesday, we have private sector and jolts. Remember, jolts is job openings. So on Wednesday, you're looking at jolts and ADP. Private sector uh, non-farm payrolls on Friday will be huge for this market. And lastly, some ec economists are now saying zero rate cuts this year. Um, I think there'll still be some rate cuts, but it's so interesting to see where the market has gone to, right? Markets are now anticipating 
per the Fed watch tool, three cuts this year. It used to be six. Now it's down to three. Now it's in the second half. We were supposed to get our first cut by January or February. Then it was March. Then it was May. Then now it's June. So you can see that, again, as the economy stays strong, and this non-farm payrolls report on Friday will be really important, that's going to be something to watch. All right, we're going to get right into a couple charts here as we go into stocks. Take a look at the U.S. dollar here. U.S. dollar, guys, continues to be in this wedge pattern. It's a bigger wedge pattern. Which way does it ultimately break? And again, we know our levels up up here are pretty obvious and our levels down here. So really when you look at this as a technician, there's, there's essentially this zone and this zone will get smaller and smaller over time, but you really don't necessarily know, could it go down here or could it touch here? The only thing you wanna pay attention to is if it breaks above here. If it breaks above here, you're likely headed much, much higher on the US dollar. I don't think that's gonna happen, but again, I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again, so we have to watch the levels. This is why the technical trend lines are so important, folks, is because like you literally look at this chart and I say, well, you know, it's stuck in this wedge pattern, but there's a defined level where you know it's a breakout or gets above, it starts to favor further upside. Just like if we come down here, right? If it gets below here, well, now we can say, okay, now you have a major technical breakdown. It takes the guesswork out of it. And by the way, a trend line, just because you break above, it doesn't guarantee that it's going to stay above, but it's all probabilities. Remember probabilities, folks. It's about changing the probabilities and saying, okay, as long as you're in here, this is your probabilities you're staying in here. If you get above here, probabilities shift, let's say, to 70% that you continue up below 70% that you favor down. Still leaves a little opening for a differential there, but nonetheless, that is key. All right, let's continue on here, guys. Looking at the 10-year yield, this is a 10-year yield that is kind of stuck in that same sort of thing. The difference here is that it's a very, to me, it's a very clear bear flag pattern. All right, so we have this bigger move right here, and then essentially what you have is you could almost draw a, lines on, on, the, on the lows as well as the highs, and that again, folks, for those of you that know your technical analysis, that's a bear flag. Now, granted, this is a little angled, but still, this sort of, of pattern formation is generally generally favoring downside. So not only do I expect us to go here, but eventually it breaks down. And again, it maybe we'll see. We'll see non-farm payrolls, right? We'll see the non-farm payrolls. If they come in weak, you're going to see interest rates start to tumble. We also have to watch inflation, guys. I was just reading an article on Market Watch uh, today talking about true inflation. True inflation is still, according to this article, around 8% down from 18%. But I think a lot of people in the U.S. would agree that inflation has not vanished. It's just a matter of what assets or what what goods you're looking at in terms of inflation. But food costs, a lot of these things, it still seems like it's continuing to get more expensive for average Americans. Next up, guys, take a look at this chart. I just did this trend line here. This is called a wedge pattern, excuse me, a channel, a parallel channel. This is the NASDAQ 100. But look at what we have here. If we take this low here to here to here, all the way across here, look at how we broke down right there. All right, so we were in this channel here. We then broke down, but look at how the market during this rally has come back, back, and once again today, assuming we go up a little bit, we'll be right at the underbelly of this level. Now, how do you take this? What do you, what do you make of this? Well, basically, it's the same as any sort of trend line, right? So you had support. This was support, support. This was resistance, resistance, resistance. Once it breaks support, this now becomes resistance. So it's resistance, resistance, resistance. What you're looking for is if price gets back above this line, you could head back to the high end there. But as long as it doesn't, you favor a little bit of a pullback there. And again, you could even argue you could put another parallel here. I'm, you know, apologize for my drawing skills. But basically, this would give us a general target being a lower parallel. So you just do a parallel, parallel, parallel all of them parallel, and that gives you that lower base point of potential target on the downside. All right, spiders, guys, this is a chart I've shown almost every day. We had the big rally on Friday, but look, it stayed within this wedge pattern. Now, like I said, this wedge pattern is getting so tight that at some point in probably the next week, we've got to break out of it one way or the other, either a move to the downside or a move to the upside. Watch this like a hawk. Amazing how, I mean, think about this. Think about we're going back to October, and we've stayed and just gotten the tighter and tighter and tighter on this. That is rare. Looking back at charts, especially markets, stock markets, that is unbelievably rare to do. 
Apple, let's talk Apple here. If we throw up the pre-market data here, we can see that Apple is breaking down, basically trading here uh, below 170, or right, right above 177, getting a little technical bounce. The reason why I wanna bring this to your attention is there is a level here on the daily chart that if we zoom out, this is your next T technical level, right? So looking at this, this is your next break point. I talked about it at the in the intro, right? Here we touched it on Friday. Right now we're trading right at or below that line. If we close and confirm below that line, that's really one of the last key technical supports on Apple in the near term until you get down to this level here, which again is around 165 or so. So again, it's not that far away now at 177 to 165, but for a tr $3 trillion company, it certainly does mean something. All right, let's continue on guys as we go through these charts. SMCI, we can see it's, this is your pre-market data on SMCI. This is where the news hit on Friday evening. This is kind of weird how it came out so late on a Friday. You can see it was not doing much in the after hours on Friday, and then all of a sudden, boom, and then here you are right up here. So like I said to you guys on the charts, what you're watching for here is this previous high. This is your daily chart now. And again, that's your little high pivot around 1077, right? So that is going to be your key level to watch. And again, intraday doesn't matter to me. Intraday, you, you see whips, you see little mini short squeezes, all this stuff. Where do we close today? And then do we confirm it on the next day? And ultimately, that will be something to watch. Now, if we don't get above this level and you're getting this news that has been added to the S&P 500, that would actually be taken to by me to be a very bearish sign. Like, how much more good news can it get, right? It's right now, by the way, it was the biggest component of the Russell. So they're all Russell, all Russell ETFs, they'll have to sell SMCI stock and all the S&P ones will have to buy. It'll become one of the smallest components of the S&P, being only about a 50, $60 billion market cap. But nonetheless, that's kind of what's going on here. Now again, is it, you, is it normal to see a 16% move up when you get added to the S&P 500? The answer is no. Um, the last stock that had this occur to it was basically Tesla. Tesla, when it was added back a long way ago, um, it had this monstrous initial reaction, and then we know the ultimate outcome of where that stock has headed over the last couple years, but just something to keep an eye on that. All right, a couple other stocks here. I had a request for Palantir. I have no lines on this chart, so let's just take a quick gander at Palantir. Palantir, again, has had that recent surge up, really all on the AI amazement and excitement. What I'm looking at here, guys, see, see these high pivots right over here? Right off the bat, that would be where I would expect a lot of resistance to be. So I'm going to draw on a trend line, and again, you have kind of the high pivot is like a zone, so you have to take this as like a zone, right? This highest point, but then you have all these little lower points that align. And so essentially what you're looking at is you could see Palantir going up a little bit more before hitting major resistance between $27.50 and about $28.50 or so. But that is a big level of resistance there. All right, couple other things to go over for the week, guys, so we all stay on point and know what to expect. Costco is reporting earnings this week. Um, this is an amazing stock in that it doesn't trade, it trades more like a tech stock than a retailer. Retailers usually do not get PE ratios of 50. In fact, I mean, look at the P-E ratio of even Apple or Microsoft. It's not at 50. So, it, you know, you have this premium built into Costco. But one of the things that I noticed, and this is the weekly chart, I believe. No, this is the monthly, is that you can look down here and you can kind of starting to create a little bit of a parallel that you're bubbling up against to. And you can see the run. I mean, just in the last two, four, four plus months, you've gone from about $550 all the way to $750. It's a huge move. But again, we are at the higher end of this, which again, this does tell us there's resistance here. Now again, will it pull back on earnings? Earnings are a wild card, but in general, for me, and I can only speak for me, in general, being against resistance, I would tend to favor potentially a little give back in price uh, on earnings, all right? Next up, we also have another one, and this is not a big company, guys, but the chart is just so amazing that I wanted to show it. Uh, um, Abercrombie & Fitch, all right? Now, again, I'm not hip these days. I'm a little older, but apparently their brand is making a big resurgence. And again, the chart is unbelievable. This is the monthly chart. It has had two, four, six, eight, ten. We're on the 11th straight up month for a grand total. You want to get this, guys? Check this out here. If we bring this up, um, the price increase in those 11 months, 500%. 
500%. And they will report earnings, I believe it's Wednesday after the close or Thursday. I'm not 100% sure on that. But that is an incredible move. Now, looking at resistance lines, like, I mean, what do you even do in scenarios like this? I mean, that is a much bigger issue here in terms of resistance. Um, to be honest, I don't have much. We zoom out on the monthly chart. You can see it's pink here. The only thing when I get in these type of charts that look a little bit more like crypto, the one thing that I do do is I sometimes switch to log just to see if anything changes. Um, uh, let me see here. Let's draw a trend line in here. Nope, that one got above there. Yeah, I don't really see much. So again, you know, I, and listen, I could sit down with this and probably calculate some key levels. But again, it's the amazement of the move. And this is the weekly chart right here that we're looking at right now. That's incredible uh, upside on the ANF chart. All right, guys, let's go back to center screen real quick here. We're just going to take, again, a quick second to thank Luxalgo. I showed you last week what I'm developing. I'm testing it out right now on Luxalgo. So let's just take 30 seconds to thank them for sponsoring this, this live so that I can continue to give you guys this information. Take it away. Have you considered enhancing your trading experience? We have an amazing tool for you. Luxalgo creates next-gen trading indicators to help the world understand the markets in a smarter way. They have the largest user profile on TradingView and are the only official Discord partner in the technical analysis space. Luxalgo Premium operates seamlessly with top platforms, such as TradingView and Discord, making it the perfect tool for every trader. Take your trading analysis to the next level with Luxalgo. Please visit the description below and sign up for Lux Algo today. All right, guys, we're right back into it. I got my Bitcoin chart up right here. Right now, trading just above that key 65,200 and change level. Notice again, these are the levels that we talked about earlier. So as a technician, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we know our levels and we look for how long a level can be breached. All right, and again, if you breach it for, I would say, a couple days, it establishes that floor at that former resistance, now becomes support, and you start working towards the next move. And by the way, incredible move move up on Bitcoin even last week incredible right there but going to this and this is the weekly chart on Bitcoin very clearly what do we have this was your 2021 early year high this will be your secondary high here at 69 so 65,069 we're obviously piercing 65 right here we have to see and and know if it can hold above the price target all right next up I just want to show you guys here real quick Cardano Cardano is trading into resistance. We've talked about this one quite a bit. Had this beautiful downsloping breakout right here and off to the races. Look at where it's trading into. So you do have Cardano into some resistance right here around this 78 cent level, 79 cent level. We'll have to watch and see how that goes. The other thing to mention, guys, You've now entered the euphoric stage of crypto. And the euphoric stage of crypto follows the euphoric stage of, of stocks. We've seen, again, stocks like SMCI doing crazy things that in normal markets wouldn't occur. People, by the way, the euphoric stage is where people stop asking questions and they buy things that they know probably don't have any real value, but they're still buying them because they think someone else will buy it from them higher. And again, so think about this. It takes away the technicals and the fundamentals. When you get in this market in environment, a lot of the technicals and fundamentals, you throw them right out the window because it's all a momentum trade. It's a greed trade. And the reason I bring this up is because if you look at something like Dogecoin, Dogecoin is just ripping higher. Um, well, this is Polkadot, but let's bring up Doge real quick. And you could see the returns or the move that we have now seen on Dogecoin in just a, a few days, right? So we're getting the kind of the you know, I don't want to say the Dogecoin is, is crap, but it's, it's a clearly a meme coin. And this has now run over 100%. SHIB has also done it. But you want to know the craziest thing? We have this one right here, Pepe, right? Pepe, look at this run on Pepe from down here up here just in the last week. And again, if we do a measurement of how far this thing has come, it is absolutely incredible. And in fact, we'll do it right now. We're now talking about a 6x or 600% move in the last week on Pepe. Now, again, is there really intrinsic value in Pepe? The answer is no. And, I, and honestly, I don't think there's many crypto people that would disagree with me, even if they're 100% all about crypto. And the answer, again, is you just want to take it as a signal that the euphoric stage is upon us. Now, the euphoric stage can last for long periods of time. But 
What we do know, and we know this from 2021, is that when the music stops, you don't want to be one of the people holding the bag because, again, it can come down very, very fast. Like, you can see this thing down 50% of this move in a day or two alone as that music stops. So it becomes a musical chairs game, and the question is who's left without a seat at the, at the table, essentially, when it all ends. Okay, a couple other charts here we have to go over, folks. We have to look at gold. Gold continuing to power up. When I was looking earlier, gold was basically flat. We have now see it up nicely on the day. I do believe this is an actual real breakout. Today it will confirm. If you close today above Friday's high right here, this will confirm the breakout. The most important thing about this breakout, guys, is that essentially what we have is the inverse head and shoulders that I've shown you guys, right? So let me bring up my trend tool here. Um, let's see which real quick here. Bear with me. There we go. So if we draw this in, we have a very clear head and shoulder inverse. I should say inverse because inverse is bullish. Uh, head and shoulders is bearish. So this is an inverse head and shoulder pattern right here. And again, the kicker to this is here's again, shoulder, head and shoulder. The kicker to this is we can calculate the target, right? So now that you're getting the breakout, this is now a triggered pattern, meaning that it is now a pattern that should play out to target unless it gets negated. How would it get negated? If it closes back below this line, all right? But right now it's not. So what you do is you take the lowest point here, shoot a line straight up to there, and then you map that out from the same point of here, you do the same distance to the upside. Ultimately, it turns out to be about $2,530 to $40 as a target. So you're looking at that $2,500 level on gold. And again, like I've been saying, and I've, I've listened, I've had plenty of bad calls. I've had a fair amount of good calls as well. But this has been one of them that I've said is it's coming. The head, the head and shoulder, inverse head and shoulders. I've said, again, I've given you guys the targets. Um, the miners, we talked about Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining already up, what, 10 plus percent just since we talked about that. This one, again, should continue because, again, central banks were buying like crazy, underinvested by U.S. investors by a major margin. And again, what you have to look at is where's the VIX? It's a risk on game. Gold should not be performing like this. It should be way down here, right? I mean, this should be where gold is in a risk on market. Gold does well when it's risk off, when people run for safety. This is breaking out during the highest risk, risk on market we have seen in probably a decade. That's a bullish sign right there. All right, couple other charts here. In fact, one other good call that I made, guys, was the natural gas call. There were a lot of doubters when I said I was long natural gas. It is continuing to bounce. We knew we had the trend lines down here. And again, nice move today. Remember the resistance line, guys. Resistance is just above that $2 level at around 205. So again, you should see a little bit more upside, but then it's gonna have its first test of resistance. If it gets through there, you're going to this low pivot here, which is around the 225 level. And lastly, oil guys, in fact, this was another good call. I said it was gonna break out on oil. Let's clear this off. So again, oil was another one, right? We had the cup and handle pattern formation. You could either make a case that this was the cup and handle, or you could even say this was the cup and handle. Doesn't really matter. The point is, the pattern was bullish consolidation. Everyone was saying, oh, oil should go down, China, China, China. I look at it and I say, guys, China's printing more money than, than ever before to stimulate their economy, and the U.S. economy is still good. Therefore, this should actually go up. And sure enough, it's broken out here right above this line that I told you guys. That's your zone right there, basically 85 bucks per barrel. All right, guys, back to center screen here. As always, thank you guys for supporting me. Don't forget, we got the wheel. We're going to start starting tomorrow where we're going to be adding the key prizes in here, probably two a day, every day until this is filled. Then every day we're, we're going to uh, spin it and give away prizes worth anywhere between 200 to 1000 maybe even $5,000 per day. Remember, you have to follow Verified Investing on Twitter and on YouTube to be entered into this. And again, it's right here, and we'll start adding. And again, these prizes, these are legit. This isn't like, oh, we're going to give you like 10 doge, like, oh, whoop de doo This is legit hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth in prizes per day because you guys freaking rock. You sit, you sit there, you watch me. I appreciate your time every single day. Thank you again for supporting me. Go have a wonderful Monday, guys. I will talk to you soon. Take care.